yesterday, we were taking a look here at a standard switch. And so we discussed on how the standard switch, we use these uplinks as the doors to get back into the physical environment to which you're connecting. And remember, you know, depending on what we have going on within our both our virtual machine port groups as well as some of these internal ports, you know, there are things that I want to talk about today that could impact how we actually have to have things set up physically to what we ultimately connect. A lot of things we can do, you know, independent of the physical network and just kind of handle the communication within the virtual side of the structure. But at the end of the day, you always got to remember we ultimately, you know, <laughs> no point in having all these systems unless the other people who need to have access to them can communicate with them. So making sure we're paying attention to how that ultimately ties back into the physical environment was very, very important to us. Mentioned a little bit this idea of, you know, one virtual switch, multiple virtual switches, you know, multiple virtual machine port groups. At the moment, really no right or wrong answers, but as I do my demo this morning, I hope that as we explore some of the other different features and uh, settings on the different port groups, starts to give you some ideas on why you might decide to create not just one, but multiple virtual switches or also just different kind of virtual machine port groups. None of the VM kernel ports are going to be driven out of necessity because of either storage we're trying to connect to or features we're trying to use. So those happen because you're forced to do it based on features you're trying to take advantage of. But the virtual machine port groups and the virtual switches themselves, that is really going to come back ultimately down to your design and what you're trying to put in place. So right away, as mentioned, what I was going to do is I'm going to jump out of here and I just want to slide back out here to my system share this out and start off the day, just dive right into a uh, little demo action here. Oh, it timed out. I tried to have it pre-rigged. I thought I'd log in already and all set. But... Yep, too long before I got back here. So, you know, let me do Mr. Password for you. Boom. Okay. And don't forget with that window that opened up, you know, every day when it first opens, uh, again, if you need to scale it, that upper button in that upper left-hand corner. Uh, you got to do it every day. It's always, always reverts back. Okay, so here I am, and I have my client running here, and I'm connected out here to the center. Not that that's important, because I could do this even just when I connect to the host. Uh, I'm coming over here to the host and clusters view, and you can see right now I have like this ESXi 57 selected. And I'm over here on the configuration tab, and specifically I'm over here on networking. And I mentioned yesterday that what you're seeing right now is exactly what you get right out of the gate. After a fresh install, the only thing you're going to get is a single vSwitch, vSwitch 0, and then we can see it as a single VM kernel port that has been specified for management traffic. That's how we've been able to connect using our client to the host. And then we also have one virtual machine port group for virtual machines, and this is called VM Network. And yesterday when we created virtual machines, because that was the only port group you had to choose, well, that's what we chose. And that's why you can see these virtual machines that I created are actually showing up here underneath the setting. So I have a couple options out here. You can see up here to the right, I got a refresh, add networking and properties, and closer to vSwitch 0, I also see a remove and a properties button. I'm going to start off with the properties button. This properties button in the upper right hand corner, I can click this, and you'll notice that all it is actually letting me to do is turn on support for IPv6. And that's it. So I can check that or uncheck that. We're not using that, so it doesn't really need to be checked. I don't know how that got checked, but um, somehow it was. But um, this is one of those things, just be aware of the fact that, see this little orange squiggly? Just kind of observe those, because if you ever see those, it means you can make changes to the dialog box, but until you actually reset the host, it actually will not have any impact. So just make sure you kind of note that. Anytime you see this little orange squiggly, you'll see that numerous places over the next couple of days. Uh, just realize you, know, you can make the change, but you actually have to reboot that host for that to really go into effect. Okay, so that's all there is in that properties button. All right? We come down to here, I can go to the properties button that's closer to the vSwitch, and I'll actually come in to see the properties of the vSwitch. And what you'll see is that inside of this area, there is a reference to the vSwitch itself. These are almost like global settings. And then any type of virtual machine port group or VM, virtual machine port group or VM kernel port, those are also going to be listed. And what I'll show you is that in a second, I'm going to come do a little more thorough tour of all these settings. But if I hit edit here, you'll see that these are essentially almost like the global settings for the vSwitch. If, however, I wanted more granular control, I can actually change the settings on a port group by port group or VM kernel port basis by simply selecting the VM kernel port or port group and doing an edit, and you'll see that I have all the exact same tabs and settings that then I could modify. 
and I would simply check off the box that I'm basically overriding the global settings and specifying my value here. So we really do have is, you know, a lot of control here on how we actually want to, you know, each port group can have different settings, each of your kernel port can have its own different settings, or it can simply inherit the settings that you have for the global switch itself. So more on those in a minute. If I come over here to the Network Adapters tab, I just wanted to show you once again that, you know, here is, you know, an adapter that's associated with this V switch. Notice that there's a little edit button down here, but the only thing you can do is actually set speed and duplex. Because remember, these are just doors for communication to flow in and out of. The uplink ports are simply not going to be receiving, like, any type of direct IP configuration. They truly are just doors for things to flow in and out of. So you can't do anything really, you know, much in here at all. Very easy for me to add another one, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But um, again, nothing really gets configured actually on the network cards for the host. They're just doors for information to flow in and out of. So I'm going to close this for a second. And I just wanted to come back out here because I eventually I just want to make sure that we always stress the idea that you have to have a story. You've got to have a game plan on what you're trying to put in place. So as an example, let's just say, again, we'll get in more into this, you know, later, but just to kind of, you know, rig something for myself, let's just say that one of the things that I was going to be doing is I wanted to add some kind of VM kernel port to vSwitch 0. Maybe I know that I needed to set this up so I can access some other storage like tomorrow. Um, so, you know, how would I go about that? Well, what I would tell you to do is if I'm trying to add something to vSwitch 0, no matter what it is, I prefer to go into the properties where this was inside of vSwitch 0 because now I'm in vSwitch 0. And you can see if I wanted to add something to vSwitch 0, I could come down here and who would have ever guessed but to use the add button. I'm going to add something to vSwitch 0. So I would hit add and I get into this dialog box that says what are you trying to do? Virtual machine or VM kernel? Now this is another one of those areas where I really, I, I can really make fun of the, the networking sections a lot because definitely I have a lot of criticisms over certain things that pop up. Really don't like this dialog box. I find it to be extremely misleading. Uh, and it's not so much, you know, misleading in the sense that it's not true. Um, it's just misleading. It's misleading in the sense that you're not really creating a virtual machine. You're creating a virtual machine port group. And in a similar way, I'm not really creating a VM kernel. I guess it is a VM kernel port if that's what I want. So just the idea here is that you would select what you want. So in my story, I said I was creating a VM kernel port so that I have something that will be able to communicate with my storage. So with that in mind, I'm just going to click Next. At that point, I would give it a name. And this is something you'll be doing later today, but you know, I'm just going to create one right now. This is going to be called IP Storage. Okay. At that point, I'm not using a VLAN. If I wanted to, I could could check out these boxes. Remember, if we're talking about using this for storage, at that point, whether it's fiber channel over Ethernet, iSCSI, or uh, network attached storage, we're, we're good to go. For the other things that are more feature-oriented, for like management communication, the fault tolerant VMs, or vMotion, notice we have check boxes for those. Uh, but I don't need any of those. Uh, maybe I'll make this a management for it, whatever. Um, click Next. At that point, I then, because I know I'm using this to communicate with storage, I would need to give the VM kernel port an IP address that was in line with its ability to communicate with our storage. So in this particular case, you know, the address that I'm going to use is going to be 172.16. Again, make sure you guys are paying attention to your PDF. Please remember today when you open up the PDF again, do not use the very first one you see. Make sure that you are actually, who am I, by the way, 57? Make sure you actually page down in your PDFs to find you. Uh, I hope everyone recalls that from yesterday. Do not just use the first addresses on the page one, uh, or else we're going to have address conflicts. So make sure you guys are paying attention to what needed to be specified. Anyway, so I put in what was going to be appropriate. I would just say finish. And just like that, I'm going to wind up right back in the settings area of this V switch. And now I can see this new VM kernel port that I just added. Again, the clicking and the mechanics of this is really easy. I mean, the key is just knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay. So that's if I'm trying to add something to vSwitch 0. Well, I'm going to kill my sharing real quick. I'll be right back. I just got to get that camera out of my way.
drive me nuts. There we go. You're out of there. Yeah, I know. I, I know. That's, exactly, that's funny. You're just insane. It was just I didn't want to kill it because I was in the middle of that little uh, memo, but that's exactly what. There you go. Now we're back. Yep, all good. All right. Cool. Yeah, it was driving me nuts. There you go. Get that camera out of there. Cool. So now let's just say that instead of adding something to V switch zero, part of my design, I decided I wanted another V switch. Well, if I want to add another V switch, in that case, I'm going to use this add networking button over here in the upper right corner. If I use this button, it opens up, look at that, same dialog box. What are you trying to do? Another virtual machine port group or VM kernel port? The difference is, is that by default, if I go through the wizard using that button over here to the right, so if I use this add networking button, by default, it's always going to try to create a brand new V switch. So again, what I like to do, if I hit close, let me just close real quick. If I'm trying to add something to vSwitch 0, I personally use the properties button and go into vSwitch 0 and use the add from inside. That way I know I'm right where I need to be. If I'm trying to add another vSwitch, then I use this add networking button over here to the right. My story here, I was going to create another virtual machine port group in this new vSwitch that I'm creating. So I would click next. At that point, it wants to automatically create a brand new standard switch wants to grab an adapter to go with it, that's all fine. Again, you could actually, just so you guys know, to be technically accurate, you do see the options. I could actually still add something to vSwitch 0 here or to another vSwitch. It just defaults to always creating a brand new one. So if you're a ton of you could probably do it either way, but I, I tend to prefer using the buttons the way I describe them. It's just I have found for myself that they cause me less problems and I wind up making less mistakes. Obviously, you don't have to do it that way, but it's just I've always been partial to it. Well, it's, it's a comment came in saying on the best practice you want to choose a different adapter. Well, VM Linux Zero is already used for vSwitch Zero. So as you can see here, I mean, that, that's not happening. So it is looking at what are the adapters that I have available to me. And so I wouldn't say, you know, best practice, choose any particular one. It would just, I'd want you to have your design in place and you know in which ones you're selecting. And just kind of like the comments that I made yesterday, I'd, I'd want you to know physically, you know, what you actually have to work with. I'd want to make sure you're kind of strategically choosing different ones or different adapters so you really get better fault tolerance, you know, that kind of thing, a little redundancy. So, click next. Now, when it comes to the labels, I just so you guys know, these are case sensitive. And because of some other features we're going to get into later, we want to make sure we're very consistent. So just be aware of the fact that I believe they're going to have you create something like production. If that's not what they tell you to build, build whatever they tell you. But please make sure you're paying attention to how they actually typed it in. Because if you do production with a lowercase p, and your friend does production with a capital P, they both say production, but they're not the actual same labels, and so we'll have conflicts later. Some of that's actually fun to see because it's just things you got to fix later. Uh, so I really don't have a problem with it, but in, in a perfect world, I'd rather everything just go perfectly smooth for you. So pay attention to your labels because, again, they are case sensitive. And when we're trying to get into features like the motion later, you know, we need to make sure those exist in any host you're trying to move something to. So it can impact us. Again, a little summary screen, and I'd say finish. And just like that, it'll take a second, and all of a sudden it'll pop up here for me. Sure enough, there's now vSwitch 1 with my virtual machine port group called production. And in case you're wondering, just so you guys know, it, it is always going to label these for us, vSwitch 0, vSwitch 1, vSwitch 2, vSwitch 3. If you ever delete one, it will actually backfill the next time you create one. So it, it names those automatically. I can't rename them. And they do backfill. So if I created vSwitches 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then I delete vSwitch 2, when I go to create a new one, it will recreate vSwitch 2. It backfills. In case you're curious. 